This video is sponsored by Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world. Their engaging lessons help you learn new languages naturally through real-world conversations. Babbel is scientifically proven to help you start speaking your chosen language in just three weeks. Their lessons are designed by real language teachers and will get you ready to converse about travel, business, relationships, and more. They have a few different subscription options, including a lifetime subscription. During the holidays, while you're giving out gifts to all of your loved ones, why not give yourself something cool? The gift of learning a new language. Just 10 minutes a day can get you started. Their lessons are expertly crafted to keep you interested and also maximize your learning. I recently went on a trip to Peru. It was amazing, so gorgeous there, and my lessons I've been working on with Babbel turned out to be incredibly helpful with little conversations like telling a cab driver where I was trying to go or asking merchants how much their items cost. Puedo pagar con tarjeta? Solo aceptamos efectivo. Hasta cuando está abierto? I was pleasantly surprised that the different phrases I'd picked up through Babbel actually stuck in my mind and were right there at my fingertips when I actually needed them. Get 60% off of your subscription to Babbel by clicking my link below and be sure to let me know in the comments which language you would most like to learn. Good night, Twinkle Toes. Your toy train for Michael came out magnificently today. I'm so proud of you. Sleep tight. I hope you have sweet dreams of a sleigh ride through a winter wonderland, guided by prancing reindeer. Good night, sugar plum. Your teddy bear for Emily is coming along perfectly. I can't wait to see you at the finishing touches tomorrow. Rest well, little one. I hope you dream of graceful snowflakes twirling and dancing in the winter breeze before landing on your tongue. Good night, Ginger Snap. Your dollhouse for Jessica is a masterpiece. I love the wallpaper you pasted onto each room's walls today. Rest peacefully, my dear elf. I hope you are treated with a cozy dream of the fireplace. Savor warm cookies and hot chocolate with the comforting crackle of burning logs and the soft glow of flickering flames. Good night, Peppermint. Time to tuck you in and rest those weary eyes. My goodness, what a day it has been for you. You've been bustling about as can be, working your magic to prepare for Christmas. You've been a whirlwind of activity, haven't you? Making toys that will light up children's faces, brighter than Rudolph's nose on a starry night. Excellent job on the Beagle Puppet today for Matthew. He's going to be so thrilled when he sees it. You really nailed the likeness to his beagle. Cooper looks exactly like him. I wish for you ice skating dreams, twirling and swirling, gliding effortlessly over the surface of a frozen pond. Looks like 
like all the other elves are fast asleep already But not you, Peppermint You look wide awake Why is that? Mm-hmm Mm-hmm You're feeling a bit stressed, I see. Like you didn't do a good job today and might not do a good job tomorrow. Oh my poor dear. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you're feeling like this. What a terrible way to feel. But it does happen to us all sometimes. Cheers everyone up just to see your rosy smiling face every day. I'd like to help you relax, my little elf. I'm happy to spend as much time here at the foot of your bed as you need until you start to feel more relaxed. More comfortable, more soothed, and sleepy, and confident, believing that you really are the most marvelous elf. And before you know it, you'll be so relaxed and drifting off to enjoy those sweet ice skating dreams. Just relax. 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 smooth down your blankets. And tuck you in. Nice and snug.
feel comfortable? Are you warm? Would you like more pillows or more blankets? Alright. I like to fetch you a nice warm cup of hot chocolate. Nothing like a warm hot chocolate with marshmallows and whipped cream to soothe the troubled elf right to sleep, right to sleep. Be right back, little one. Here we are. I have put your hot chocolate with the marshmallows and the whipped cream, just how you like it, to this precious bear mug. It's got this little ears, nose, eyes, cheeks, and his paws he's holding. Some knitting needles because he's working on a sock. He's already completed the first one and it's on his right foot. But his left foot is bare because he's still hard at work. Just give it a few moments to cool down before you take a sip. I don't want you to burn yourself. After just a minute or two, it should be the perfect temperature for you. I'll set it on your bedside table over here. Let's see. How can I help you relax while you enjoy your hot chocolate? Hmm. I did promise Santa that I would help him out by reviewing one of the pages of the naughty and the nice list. Just to double check, make sure he didn't miss anything, categorized the children properly. Would you like it if I went over the list with you? Do you think that would help you relax? Give you something to focus on? While you drift off? Well. Right. Hmm. Who do we have on the nice list? Hannah, because she helps her neighbors shovel snow. That's well deserved. Joshua donated his allowance to the soup kitchen. Taylor always shares her toys with her siblings. Nicholas helps his grandma bake her pie. Alexis volunteers at the animal shelter. Andrew always does his chores. Elizabeth helped the new girl in school feel very welcome by inviting her to sit with her friend group at lunch. Austin carries in groceries for the grandma living next door. Madison helps her dad garden. Tyler made his mom breakfast in bed. Megan helped tutor her classmate who was struggling in math. Daniel is very generous with his compliments, making everyone feel good about themselves. Kayla reads bedtime stories to her little brother when her mom is too tired. Joseph always reminds his friends to wear their helmets. 
Rachel writes nice letters to her grandparents. Zachary found a lost wallet and worked hard to return it to its owner. Lauren donated her old toys to a local shelter. And David always puts the books back in their rightful place at the library. Victoria has excellent manners. William picks up trash and litter whenever he sees it. Brittany defends her friends from bullies. Justin includes everyone in recess games. Nicole cheered as loud as she could for everyone in the talent show. Morgan is very patient with others. Alex always thanks the bus driver. Stephanie took in a stray cat and nursed it back to health. And Robert shares his lunch when other students forget. What do you think, Peppermint? Do each and every one of those children deserve to be on the nice list? Or should anyone be moved over to the naughty list? You think they should all stay? Me too. I'm quite impressed. All these children have been so very good this year. Well, now, let's see about the naughty list. On the naughty list, we have Alyssa, who snuck into the kitchen late at night and devoured a whole batch of freshly baked chocolate chip cookies her mom had made for a charity event. None were left for the fundraiser. Oh dear, Alyssa. John was told many times no playing ball inside the house, but he kept at it anyway and knocked over his grandmother's most precious vase and then hid the evidence in the closet. John, oh no. Definitely naughty. Jordan gave the family dog a surprise makeover with permanent markers three different times this year. My, my, my. Olivia has a habit of jumping around the corner and yelling at her teacher so loudly she drops her coffee. Sam used the hose to turn his mother's garden into a mud wrestling pit with his friends and they ruined all the vegetables. Courtney prank called the principal to tell him his house was on fire. Naughty, naughty. Kevin ripped up his mother's best pillows to play with the feathers. Amanda has cheated on every quiz this school year. Ryan stole his friend's favorite toy truck. Brianna was secretly playing Nintendogs under the covers, far past her bedtime. James kept climbing trees, even though it was against the rules, and got stuck so high up, his mom had to call the fire department. Jennifer told her grandma that she hates her cooking. Anthony plucked roses from his neighbor's yard without asking for permission. Abigail gave the class hamster a bubble bath. However, she did apologize sincerely and offered to clean the hamster's cage for a month. Hmm. What do you think, Peppermint? Naughty or nice? It's a tricky call, but 
I'd say she's redeemable for the nice list. Hmm. She is good at sharing her toys. Let's move Abigail to the nice list. And then Christian did finger painting all over the living room walls. But it turns out he was trying to paint a mural for his parents to celebrate their anniversary. Hmm. Do the good intentions outweigh the paint all over the walls? I think we can be a bit generous with Christian. Let's move him to the nice list. His intentions were good. Then last is Rebecca. Rebecca got caught with her hands in the cookie jar a few too many times this year. But, looks like she always shares the cookies with her friends. Do you think she's welcome on the nice list this year? I agree. Right. Well, that's that. Thank you for your input, Peppermint. That was very helpful. My next task for tonight will be taking inventory of all of the gifts that the elves completed today. Would you like to take a look with me? while you finish your hot cocoa. I think that might be quite fun and soothing for you. Good. First, why don't we take a look at your work from today that you seem to think is so unimpressive. Matthew didn't send in a letter to Santa this year. We do know about him that he absolutely adores his pet beagle, Cooper. So you had the wonderful, inventive, thoughtful idea to make Matthew a puppet of Cooper since one of Matthew's favorite things to do is put on puppet shows for his family and friends. And you captured Cooper's likeness perfectly. Everything from his kind eyes to his floppy tongue, his soft brown nose, his floppy, droopy, velvety ears that Drag down on the ground. The dark brown splotch on his back. The white tip of his tail. His perfect little paws. You've really captured every last detail. This light brown pack on the top of his leg, the dark brown down the middle of his back, his white legs. The colors you chose match him perfectly. And the fabric you selected is so soft, it's like a dream. This will be perfect, multi-purpose sort of toy. It can be played with action style when it's used as a puppet and be lovingly cuddled, snuggled up against at night to bring little Matthew lots of comfort when he's having nightmares. The mouth opens with so much personality. Wiggles those around make it look like he's sniffing. Matthew. 
Matthew is going to be absolutely delighted. Whenever you feel down, just think about how much joy you bring to the lives of children everywhere, just like Matthew. This is an absolute work of art. You are such a remarkable elf. You are so talented. And we all feel so lucky to have you. Good job today. Good job. You tried your very best. And it certainly shows. a 
giraffe, a cow, and a horse. So this will fit in quite well. And this was lovingly crafted by Evergreen, our master woodworking elf. maple wood carefully painted with the ear, eye, nose, and mouth and adorned with a red ribbon tied around the neck and the possible arms and legs you can put however you like and then the plaid headband that Ashley requested to go with her favorite dress. Jingleberry was sure to match the exact shade of green perfectly, so it will be an exact match, complement all of her winter outfits just right. It's nice and squishy and soft, so it won't be too tight. be so happy to unwrap this. Next we have Christopher Socks. In his letter to Santa, he mentioned that he loves stargazing with his telescope that he received for Christmas last year. But his toes tend to get cold after spending a bit of so, these cozy wool socks in warm, festive colors, perfect for this time of year. And the star pattern reflecting his favorite interest. And the wool material is sure to keep him toasty warm, just like he asked for.
this little snowman is just the thing for Brandon. He just turned four, and this was his very first year building a snowman. So, this ornament will be the perfect thing to commemorate his first snowman. And when he and his family see it hung on the tree every year, they'll remember that lovely time they had together crafting Brandon's very first snowman. I love the red, green, black, and beige hat with the furry brown trim, the white fluffy snow shiny black eyes and cold mouth, the carrot nose and the blushing cheeks. Blue cardigan. 
and this has pop-ups in it. One snowy afternoon, Peter Rabbit leaves home to collect firewood for his mother. Little does he know that this will be the start of an exciting adventure in the heart of the wintry forest. feels a chill. Her weather vane spins. She braces her beams. A snowstorm begins. This one sounds exciting. I wonder what's going to happen once the storm starts. Or I could read you the snowy day. One winter morning, Peter woke up and looked out the window. Snow had fallen during the night. It covered everything as far as he could see. Or your last option would be the mitten. When Nicky drops his white mitten in the snow, he goes on without realizing that it is missing. And one by one, woodland animals find it and crawl in. He'd like to do barn and winter. Good choice. Alright. Settle in, little one. Settle in. little mouse hiding in a pail to stay safe and warm out of the snow. The barn feels a chill. Her weather vane spins. She braces her beams. A snowstorm begins. Leaves dead and withered. Branches all bare. Swirling and twirling. Snow flies through the air. Cow's bell is silent, no green grass in sight, no grazing or lazing in blankets of white. Where is the cow? Out of the storm, cuddly and cozy, safe, dry, and warm.
pig's pen is mushy, a snow and mud slurry, slop and forgotten, left in a hurry. Where is the pig? This is where the pig would usually be, but she's nowhere to be found. How mysterious. Out of the storm, snuggly and snoozy, safe, dry, and warm. The pig looks so happy. She's enjoyed a, a dish full of apples, and she's snoozing away, safe, dry, and warm, having sweet dreams. Hen's nest is scattered, blown far away. The only remains some feathers and hay. Where is the hen? See, where could she be? Out of the storm, nestled in neatly, safe, dry, and warm. She looks cozy as can be. Goat's toys are hidden, buried down deep. Once wobbly seesaw and iced over heat. Where is the goat? Out of the storm, tucked in all toasty. Safe, dry, and warm. Dog's bone is missing. Dinner bowl bare. No yapping or barking. No prints anywhere. Where is the dog? Out of the storm. Dozy and dreamy. Safe, dry, and warm. Someone is coming. Doors open wide. A haven. A refuge. Barn tucks them inside. Huddled together. Safe, dry, and warm. Barn hugs them all through the cold winter storm. Did you like that story? I thought that was quite nice. I loved seeing all of the warm, glowing orange pictures of all of the creatures enjoying the warmth and safety within the barn. No matter how much the snow and the wind rages outside, they're so comfortable, especially at the end when they're all cuddled together like this. I don't think it could get much better than that. Doesn't that look like heaven? All right, what do you think, little one? Would you like to hear another story? Okay, which one next? The Mitten. Good choice. Okay. The Mitten. Let's see what happens. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. There he is, dancing in the snow. Looks like he loves it so much, he wants his mittens to match. At first, his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens, and finally, Baba made them. After she finished, she said, When you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound. But then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nicky went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for the both of them. When he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. 
Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered in prickles, they made room. As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed in as tightly as could be, but what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size, but Baba's good knitting held fast. Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Ah, 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 cha choo the force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, Nikki saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Papa's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw that he still had his new mittens. Oh, but she looks quite perplexed because this mitten is the right size, and this mitten is strangely ginormous. Isn't that? Thank you.